saw you, you posting today on Facebook that you did this arm wrestling in the car. And yeah. Who, who won it? I, I obviously won. I'm, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man. I let him win. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he does have very good upper body strength. So what, what, what other kind, kind of sports are you doing? You're well, actually, Matt, I'm learning so much about Matt on this trip. Tell us all about your skateboarding prowess. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I started skateboarding when I was about eight um, or nine. And, um, was it eight or nine? This is very important. I'd say um, sort of midway between eight and nine. Um, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and, you're at the age when you're like eight and three quarters. Oh, okay. Probably eight and three quarters. Okay. Um, Just want to clear that up. But uh, no, I was trying to do it professionally at the same time as uh, I was my music. And the music kind of was, you know, my first love, my first passion, singing and playing guitar and writing songs. But skateboarding took over in, in a similar fashion. Um, I hurt myself a lot. You know? I spent a bit of time in hospital, but I'm all right now. Did you? What breaks did you have? Sorry, I'm interviewing him now. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I did break my arm, but I mean, there was another reason I ended up in hospital is to do with my um, groin. Do we want to talk about your groin? Right now? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really right now. It's working fine now. <laughs> That's the kind of questions I used to ask. Okay. Because I, I studied psych psychology <laughs> back 100 years ago. <laughs> There is this motherfucking fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, con congrats on, on your chart position. What Woo! is it mean? Well, seven, Thank you. six, two. What's that? In the UK? Yeah. We have uh, top 10. We're number 10 currently. And uh, that's amazing. You know, it's really tough, the UK charts at the moment. Mm. And we've had a lot of support from, um, from radio. Uh, but it's hard. It's hard to get played. It's quite political over there. Mm. Why is that? Oh, gosh, it's, it's a minefield, honestly. Um, I think what's been incredible for us is Radio 2, which is the biggest station in the UK. They made us Record of the Week, and then they've A-listed us for five weeks, which is really amazing. It's incredible. It's a record fan, Emma. Yeah, and we've, we've had really great support from our fans as well, and Twitter's so fantastic now. You can really get a feel for what's going on out there, and Matt's got brilliant fans, and I've got brilliant fans, and they've kind of come together and supported us mm, yeah, in everywhere they can. Mm. So who, who came up with the idea of you, you two guys working together for this song? Um, it was myself and my manager. We, uh, um, me and Mel had bumped into each other and we have mutual friends. Um, and we were playing at the Isle of Wight Festival together. We spoke then. Um, and it wasn't until I saw Melanie singing live in an acoustic uh, scenario. Uh, and I was absolutely blown away. Uh, she's incredible live. Um, and I sat there with my manager. I was like, how can we make this work? As, uh, how can, you know, we should work together, maybe write together. Um, and then it uh, came down to Mel coming to see me at one of my shows. And we spoke backstage after a few beers and said, why don't we do a duet? So I knew that Mel was up for writing, but whether we were fully up for doing a duet, it's, it's a big thing. It's a big deal. Um, and I thought it may have been the drink talking because it was the end of the night. It was like two in the morning. Um, and then when we woke up in the morning, it was all very... When we woke up. We, we didn't wake Sorry. up together. <laughs> well, we both woke up. <laughs> no one died. In different <laughs> beds. <laughs> when we woke up separately in other areas of London, um, I, uh, you know, we, we, we got in touch. And we were like, okay, let's definitely do this. So I sent Mel a demo of the kind of the bare bones of loving you and, and here we are now. And now what, what, how would you describe the, the, the chemistry between you both when you, when you first met Matt? Well, yeah, you know, I, I, of course I was aware of Matt, you know, he was the winner of X Factor 2010 in the UK and it's a very different show in the UK than it is here. It's the biggest show on television. We've had, you know, some great winners. But Matt's so different because he's an artist, he's a musician, you know, he produces his stuff. And, you know, like no other X Factor winner, really. So it was quite groundbreaking when he won. So I was very aware of him and I thought, he's all right, he's not bad him. And um, it wasn't until I saw him do his own show live, I was like, okay, he's amazing. And he'd asked me about working together, which I was, you know, really up for. And we've just always got on, haven't yeah. we? I mean, we do, we're just both... Silly, I think, yeah. probably. Um, so, yeah, we hit it off and then, you know, we respect each other as performers and artists. So, um, yeah, it was just a natural progression and it's been amazing. It's been 
so quick. We only really talked about it in maybe March time and, and then we went into the studio, finished the song, recorded it, did mm. the video mm. and in a matter of, you know, a few months. Yeah. And who is the, the Spanish one of you? Because the, there is Te Amo also in Spanish available. Um, yeah, that was an idea, again, that um, myself and my manager had to do. We've got fans all over the world and in, in a lot of Spanish-speaking countries. And um, the idea came up and we just thought, why not? And we got uh, the translator to come down to the studio. Me and Mel thought, ah, oh, this will be a, it'll be a breeze. We'll just we'll learn it and, th and that will be that. And then about half an hour into it and we're rewriting the first line and it's taken us half an hour to get through. Leave your door open, you know, in Spanish was about this long. We were like, why don't we just put door, uh, Lee, I don't know. It was, di it was really difficult, but good fun. Um, quite draining as well. But Spanish sounds quite, quite great. I mean, yeah, you know, that it's a sexy song and, you know, Spanish is a very sexy language. So we thought it was a good one. But we've, we've kind of, we've... We've made a bit of a deal that if things go well here in Germany, we'll maybe get a German translation and see how that goes. Yeah. So maybe we can use Google Translator afterwards. Exactly. Like and it'd be like some really uh, weird translation. Well, here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but are you planning any more cooperations or on the upcoming album? Will there be more? Well, uh, not not on my album. Uh, my album's finished and written. Um, it's out here in November. Um, but I know that Mel is going to be working on a new album uh, next year, so I would love to help. Cool, good idea. So, um, Mel, you already mentioned that X Factor is quite huge in, in the UK, okay. and here in Germany, it's quite a struggle for, for guys who are were on the on, on the casting shows. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? Why why is it so difficult sometimes, or what what what, what could be the problem that radio stations, for example, don't play any songs by German Idol winners, and that even even the X Factor winners have pretty much, I don't know, wind in the face from... from well, the I mean, I, I have... N uh, f in Germany here, I have no idea why that's the case. Absolutely no idea. I haven't, I haven't seen it over here. But like Mel said, over in the UK, it's the biggest show that we have. You know, 20 million people watch the final, um, you know, when I won, and that's like a third of the population. Um, so you have so much exposure. You have, you know, an amazing opportunity, an amazing platform. You, and you have to work hard. It is, it's hard work. And, you know, you have to put in the groundwork, which I've done since I was 11. I picked up a guitar when I was 10, and I've been doing it ever since. And like 15 years of preparation. And then to get my break finally, and, and in such a, an amazing way, in such a big fashion you know um, I think that's what's kept things going for me personally and now having the opportunity to get Mel on board and collaborate and to, to this extent with um, you know an absolute legend then you know I'm, I'm very lucky are you, are you still in contact with Danny you know yeah of course yeah yeah she's been really supportive actually she's, she's been tweeting loads you know. about the song she's been great I once uh, spoke to, to her sister Kylie and I was asking her, um, if you are at home alone, what do you prepare yourself for eating? What do you cook? And she was laughing for five minutes and then she said, oh, I cannot cook, I cannot cook. And that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, but can, can you cook? Yes, I'm a very good cook. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your favorite dish then? Um, well, I tend to do, what do I do? Things like risottos, kind of one pot stuff. I'm not very good at presentation. I kind of, it tastes good, but it kind of looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I just um, wondered that, that Viva Forever, the musical, is already closed. What yeah. happened? Yeah, who knows? It was one of those things, um, you know, really sad. We were really, really upset about it. Um, we loved it. Of course, the music was brilliant. And we had a great team of people. Judy Crane is an incredible producer. She produced Mamma Mia. And Jennifer Saunders, who's like one of our comedy greats in the UK. And... We had a lovely cast, a great theatre, a great set, you know. It just, you know, one of those things, you know, not enough people were coming to see it, so it had to go. But it's not the end for Viva, she'll be back. But it, it, sometimes it's pretty sh strange that you don't know how the music industry work, works, right? So you have, I don't know, like Mamma Mia, the other musical, or We Were Rock You, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't yeah. work. Even within different cities. I mean, mm. We Were Rock You was in Cologne for a couple of years mm -hmm. and worked pretty well, and here in Berlin was like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. People always ask, you know, what we, what went wrong, but who knows? It's just one of those things. Yeah. And you were playing, um, like, the, the past years, like, with Jesus Christ Superstar or Blood, Blood Brothers. Um, what, what would you say, what is the big, biggest difference for you as an artist, staying on, on, on the stage with a musical show 
or presenting your own song? Um, I think the biggest difference when you're playing a role, um, you know, obviously you're being somebody else and you have um, a lot of pressure because you have a whole company of people that you, you have to get it right. You know, there's an amount of staging and um, obviously, you know, when the composer's still around and wanting it done his way, you've got, you've got to do it a certain way. Whereas when you're an artist, you can be yourself on stage and if you go wrong, you can have a bit of a giggle with the audience. But it's a bit more serious when you're in theatre. Yeah. Could you imagine playing in a, in a musical someday, maybe? What, what kind Look, of musical I mean, should it be? Um, I, I, I don't. Well, I don't think so. Not right now. I think if the time's right, and it's certainly not right now. Um, but who knows? Never say never, right? I think. <laughs> No, I just think, you know, I have a background in musical theatre from like being a kid. I went to performing arts college. It was something that I've always, you know, always followed. But, you know, Matt's a musician. He's been in bands all his life. It's like, he's, it's very different. I don't think he has any aspirations to be a West End star. But he can do a pas de vore, double pirouette. And down. And down. And down. And down. And down. Oh, my face. <laughs> I'm not sure what the show is called, but I think it's on, on the 1st of May um, in, in the Royal Albert Hall. Like a huge, 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 I think it's a benefit. Have you, have you been there? Do you know anything about it? On the 1st of May? Is what, it, this year? Gone? It's, it's every year, I think. Oh. So it must be a, a, a huge event. I don't know, because a friend of mine is a um, solo artist in there. And oh, okay. He got a choir sure. with 1,200 people in the in choir. It's not the Royal Variety Show, is it? That's no. the bigger. No. They have, they have things like that at the Royal Albert Hall all through the year. Oh, okay. Really, oh, lots oh, of oh, different oh. ones for different benefits. Yeah, I'm playing there with Jules Holland in December. Which one? I'm playing the role of Albert Hall with Jules Holland in December. Ah, okay. Yes. Just showing off now. Are you, are you already off, like, getting goosebumps when you think about it? Um, I, I don't know how, how, how often have you been in the Royal Hall? Yeah, oh, it's an amazing venue. Now, I've been really lucky. I've done a couple of things there. I performed for Mikhail Gorbachev's 80th birthday there, which was pretty incredible. There was loads of security everywhere. It was surreal. It was good. <clears throat> um, so, but um, coming back a little to the music, Porcelain is the, your next album called? Yeah, yeah. So, um, wasn't, wasn't it a song also by Moby, Porcelain, I think? I'm not too sure. So what, I don't think so. Is, is it also a song title? Or why, why yes, it's the, it's the title track of the album, um, and um, which I've, every album I've had has had a title track, Letters, the first album, The Fire, the second, Porcelain, the third. Um, but it's such it's such a different album from the, the from the first and the second. It's the first album that I feel is ready to be pushed internationally, um, and especially the, with this single leading the album, I think it's it's a brilliant start. Um, it's it's not a direct reflection of of the music on the album. It's it's really quite a mixed bag of of feels and um, and feelings on the album. I've been working a lot with uh, some great soul writers um, to push it in, the, you know, a few songs in that kind of direction. Um, I've been pushing myself vocally and I've learned so much from the first and the second album. Um, I feel, you know, the, the second album was a step away from the whole X Factor, uh, you know, away from the first album and away from the X Factor. Um, with Porcelain, it's definitely, a, you know, it's a huge step forward for me. Can you describe it a little bit more? So what, what's the progress like for you personally? Well, I mean, with the first album, um, I wasn't allowed to produce anything. Um, um, the, it was a bit more controlled by the label uh, and, and things like that. And when we moved away from Sony and Psycho and Simon Cowell, um, I regained the control I've always had previous to X Factor, which means, you know, I'm allowed to decide who I write with, uh, you know, and what kind of sounds we're making. And um, I was allowed to play all the instruments that I could play on to, on the album, you know, drums, bass, keys. Um, tr I did do the triangle, actually, um, and, uh, and all the guitars and the bass and things like that. But to have to put, you know, more of to get more of myself into the album. Um, and I learned lessons by doing that. I mean, I'd done that all my life, but I'd never released on the scale that I release now. Um, so with the second album, it was you know it was another big release for me, but it, you know with a lot of, of me in it, you know I, I co-produced the whole thing and, and wrote the whole thing, and um, it was interesting to to know how it was going to go down when it was more, you know when I moved back to myself, you know. So we've taken the the pros and the cons from that experience, and we've we've used them to our advantage with porcelain, definitely. But as you are saying that you're producing it now. Mm -hmm. it, probably means much, much more pressure on, on your shoulders. 
it, it is, and, and, and also, I mean, with the first album, there was so much promotion to do as there is with, with Porcelain, but because I wasn't producing it, there was other, there were, you know, we had other drummers, other bass players, other guitarists doing all the work. So I'd go into the writing sessions, write the track, or co-write the track, sorry, and then I'd come out and then I'd get it back, you know, a few weeks later and I hadn't lifted a finger. And which was great because it meant I could crack on and do my thing. But with this, it's like, right, we need to, we need to lay down seven drum, tra drum takes, you know. So I'm spending a lot of time, and it takes time. To get one right, it's a half a day, you know. So that, that's time in itself. And then put the bass on it, put the guitars on it. And we're going all over the place to do this. You know, I've done a lot of it in LA, some in Canada, some in New York. You know, it's been, and we've taken all these takes from all over the world. And, it, you know, it just, it's taken a lot of time, but it's great, you know. What would you, what would you say, which instrument is the... Closest for you, the guitar? Guitar, definitely. I mean, but I started playing the drums at the same age as I started playing guitar. Um, but that was more of a lunchtime at school thing rather than a, you know, an all day, every day event. And, and have you been to, like, like for, for the first album, you've been to, to Toronto, Los Angeles? Is it the same with Porcelain? Yeah, I mean, um, a lot of the, uh, some ideas for the second album have spilt into the third album, you know. Um, the, uh, And also, when you're writing a song, no matter where you are, you get um, you can get a certain feel or a certain um, energy or emotion in a take first time round that you cannot recreate, no matter how hard you try. I mean, we did it with a song called All Matters from the second album and a song from the first album called The Beat of a Breaking Heart. We tried to recreate the, the demo vocal and it just never happened. You know, it, we, I physically couldn't do it because I didn't feel the same way about the... the The, the girl that I was singing about then or the situation that had happened it was months and months on and trying to dig up those feelings and emotions is pointless because they're there but they're not as raw and you know they're not coursing through you like they, you know beat of a breaking heart I wrote that the day after it happened you know so and I did the vocal the day after it happened you know I was still crying about it for God's sake and you can hear that on the record you know sounds intense <laughs> so <Matt>, sorry <laughs> you, your, your album is coming up next year uh, you know it's really early days I've literally just made the decision to do it you know working with Matt has inspired me to get back into the studio and I've been doing musical theatre over the last couple of years and I miss my music I miss my band I miss being on stage so um, that's definitely the next step for me um, and as you are the music business now for a couple of years like being on a roller coaster ride mm. you know, like up absolutely and, up and ups and downs so what, what, yeah. do you, what do you think um, in, in which way has a musician have to have a, a thicker skin that he can work on his... On yeah, his gosh, I mean, there's so many things. On, on a level that he can still live from, yeah. from his music. Yeah, it's, there's, there's lots of things. You have to have a lot of luck. Um, you have to have a lot of tenacity, which is a good word. I don't use it very often. I'm very no, proud. I've just... dropped that one. Yeah, right? tenacity. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, I think you have to have a real passion for what you do because there are lots of knocks and there are lots of times when you think, you know, how can I, how can I put myself up from this one and, you know, keep going. So, you know, that's important and, you know, you've got to love it. And, you know, for me, I, luckily enough with the Spice Girls, I, I made a significant amount of money. So I've been able to self-finance to go on and be an independent artist not that many artists are that lucky, especially today, because you just can't make the same revenue with, with record sales. So, um, yeah, if you have good people around you kind of giving you good advice, then that will stand you in good stead. As for having a thick skin, I mean, that is required for life in general, um, especially with um, things like Facebook and Twitter now, where everybody can have a pop at you in the security of their own bedroom. Um, but as well, because of the tabloids, you know, when you're in the public eye, you, people are going to criticise you. You kind of put yourself up for it, so you have to not care. What about any any live gigs? Uh, are you planning going on on tour maybe together? Or? Um, I mean, I think we'll both be so busy come the time when I, I mean, I personally come to tour this album. Um, Mel, I should imagine, we'll be in the middle of, of writing hers, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Um, but any opportunity that we have to get up on stage together, whether it being for loving you for something on Mel's new album or mine, or, you know, or just for fun, yeah. we will do. Um, we're, we're definitely going to be touring Uh, the album over this way next year. Um, there's still so much to be done with regards to promoting the single, the second single, and then everything like that, and then seeing out Christmas and 
um, we will definitely be here.